From the, from the main screen, so from here you can see you can't press F4, so you gotta go back to the main screen to hit F4. It'll pull up the, uh, the time of day that, that it was the last time somebody set the time of day. That is not today's date, even though it happens to be today because I just did it today. But this may be, you know, last year, that's the last time somebody did it. So it's, and it has to be exactly in the same format that you see it right here, one integer off, it's a deal breaker. It will not accept it. So we get so much confusion with people not doing that. So what I personally kind of do, because I can't even remember it, is, uh, and I do this for a living, is I say, okay, it pulls up the time. I go to touch the, the, the data block. It pulls up a numeric, alphanumeric pad, and it's still in that same format. So in order to keep in that format, what I do is do a right arrow so that it doesn't get rid of the data that's there and it stays in the same format. Then I use my left arrow to go over to whatever I want to change. And if I want to change from 1035 to 1036, I'll go to the five and use my backspace. And then, or that's the 30, to get rid of the three. It went, oop, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do the five. So I'll go back and put in the three and I'll arrow back over to the five backspace, put in six, press my enter button, which is my down and left arrow carried like it was in a typewriter. Then after I do that, you press set time to, to accept that and input that. Then when it does that, then the time of day the, will change and the day of the week will change. And I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm not, I'm not gonna change the time of day. But that's the last thing you do is once you get the right format, then you press set time and it sucks it into the CPU and now it'll show on your status screen what the proper time is.